In Elixir, kernel functions are a set of built-in functions and macros that are automatically imported and available in every Elixir module. They include basic operations and constructs essential to the language, such as arithmetic operations, basic data type checks, and control flow constructs like if and case. The kernel module serves as the foundation for writing Elixir code, providing the core functionality that is used in almost every Elixir program. In this video, we are going to explore some of these by creating a user registration form demonstrating how to use kernel functions for data validation, like email formats, ensuring required fields, and validating age inputs. Let's go ahead and open up our terminal and CD into our desktop. And we can also, we'll use the same project uh, shopping cart that we've used this whole module. And go ahead and open up your Visual Studio code and open up a shopping cart. We can close the reviews and inside of the lib directory, let's create a new module and we can call this validation.ex, all right? And then def module validation. All right, now let's start by creating a, a, a validate required fields function for making sure we have all the required fields we need to create a new account. So if we were to say we're creating a new account, we're going to need the user to have a username, an email, and a password. So let's create a function called validate uh, required fields. And this will take a map called user data as an argument. And then inside of our do block, let's have a variable called required fields. And we are going to make this a list of atoms. And we're going to require username we're going to require email and we're going to require password. Okay, and so what we wanna do here is we want to make sure user data has our required fields, right? And to do that, we want to filter out our required fields against the user data being placed in. And if the field doesn't exist, we're going to set the value to nil. And then if the items are nil or an empty string, we're going to add them to a missing fields list, okay? So let's create our missing fields list right here, missing fields equals, and then it's just space down for readability. And we're going to have our required fields list, and we're gonna pipe off of that with our pipe operator. And now we're going to filter through, so enum filter, and then inside of this, filter, we want to filter any items that are nil, right? So in this anonymous function, so for the current field that we're filtering through from required fields, we can use a map.get and map.get uh, will return a value from a key. So we're going to pass in user data, which is a map, and then we're going to pass in the field, which is the key. We're looking for the username, email, or password. And if this field doesn't exist, it's going to return a nil value, all right? And then before the last closing parentheses, just put an end there and we'll get rid of that warning. But now we can use a, a kernel function called in, and in is a membership operator. And what we're looking for is if the value in this field, so if the field doesn't exist, it returns nil. If the field does exist, but inside the field, the value is nil or an empty string, we're also going to um, return it as the, a missing field. So the field is getting filtered if it doesn't exist or if it's nil. So anytime that this is true, we're going to add the field here. And anytime this is nil, we're going to add the field there. And then all we have to do after this is do an if statement. So if missing fields equals an empty list, 
then we can return that it is an okay atom and just return user data because that means uh, there are no missing fields because the list is empty. And then underneath this, if we do, if, if uh, the list is not empty, we want to return an atom error. And then inside of that, we can return our missing fields and then go ahead and pass in our missing fields list. And so if they're missing, we will at least be notified that they are missing. And we, we are missing an end statement there. There we go. And undefined variable user data. All right. So now we can check that, the, that there are required fields. So why don't we go ahead and save this terminal? There we go. And let's start up our mix da space dash capital S. No, I'm sorry. IEX space dash capital S mix. Start up our Elixir shell. And now if we go to validation, validation dot validate, validate required fields. We can pass in a map and let's just pass in an empty map and look at that. We get an error back and it says missing fields, username, email, and password. So that's pretty cool. So now if we go ahead and fill those in, so if we say username, username, and then we say email, email, and then we also have password, and we'll pass in password. And now when I hit enter, argument, I typed something wrong. Oh, we need a space after our key. And there we go. So now we got an okay atom and our user data returned. So the validation is working. Um, one problem is we know that email isn't a valid email, right? So we want something like email.email.com to be valid. So we can actually use regular expressions as well to check for email formatting and other formatting requirements that we may have. So let's make a new function called um, validate email format. And this will just take format and this will just take a variable email and inside of this let's just go ahead and create a, a regex var variable um, and that's we're just doing a regular expression here and to write a regular expression value you do the tilde r and now everything after this is a regular expression and so we can we do a forward slash here to start it, and then we do a forward slash to end it. So everything in between is a regular expression. And so inside of square brackets for the first part of our email, we want to allow everything from capital A through capital Z, from lowercase a through lowercase z, and then from everything from zero to nine, and then we also want to allow dots, underscore, um, percent symbol, um, plus and minus, and anything else. I think that is probably good for the beginning chunk of our email. And then we also want to um, add, so outside of those square brackets, that's the first chunk. We want to say, and um, we needed the the at symbol, right? Because every email has the at sign. And then after that, we want to do the same thing. We want to allow all capital letters, A through Z, um, all lowercase letters, A through Z, all numbers zero through nine. And then we'll allow a dot and a dash and then close off that square brace. So that's the next bit of checking. And then we also want to allow, um, now we want to make sure there's always a dot here. And so we need to use an escape sequence period. So it notices the dot here. 
And this is basically like, you know, dot com. We want to make sure the dot is there. And then we want to allow everything from capital A to capital Z, lowercase a to lowercase Z. And um, we're not allowing numbers in this. And then after this, we want to make sure inside of curly braces that there is at least two characters. And we can do that by two comma closing braces. So it has to be at least like a dot IO, but it will allow dot com or anything more than two. Hi, I'm Jacob. My YouTube channel and podcast reach thousands of engaged Elixir developers every month. If you're looking to promote your developer tools, services, or job opportunities to a focused audience of Elixir professionals, head to elixirmentor.com and let's discuss sponsorship options. So this is our little simple regular expression to check for email format. And then all we have to do is do an easy little if statement here. So if email um, match the match operator, which is equals tilde, and then our regex variable. And as long as it matches that pattern, we'll return an okay tuple with the email address. And if it doesn't match that pattern, we're going to return an else with a tuple with an error atom and uh, an atom that says invalid email. All right. And let's go ahead and try this in our terminal. Let's recompile. And now if we do validation dot validate email, and we need to pass in a string, jacob at elixirmentor.com. Close those parentheses and look at that. It validates. We get our okay tuple back. But now, like for fun, let's just do a dot C. We get invalid email. So that's pretty cool. And then if we do dot co, it's valid again. If we delete the dot though, it's invalid. We put the dot back and delete the at sign. It's invalid again. And then put the at symbol. And let's see if we have the, the pin operator. That's also invalid. We're not allowed to do that. So as you can see, it's pretty cool to use um, regular expressions that are automatically supported by kernel functionality. and if you don't really understand what I did, like it's pretty straightforward. Each little chunk when you're not statically checking, like see like the at symbol static, the dot is static. Um, you just kind of add them with plus signs and put what you want in square brackets. So that's pretty neat. Then we can write just a simple function to validate age and we can use the comparison operator. And we saw this in the Boolean in the Boolean types video, right? And this is really easy. Let's just do def uh, validate underscore age function and pass in age and then do an end. And we're just going to say if age is greater than or equal to minimum age and we'll make a min age right here and we'll say minimum age is 18. So if it is greater than or equal, we'll say do, and then re return a, an okay tuple with the age. And then an else block, it'll be a, an error tuple with age is not valid, Adam returned, if they are under age. So if you wanted to do an age check for your platform, and then we can recompile this. And now if we do validate, validation, validate age, and we pass in 21, we get okay. But if we pass in 17, we get age is not valid. All right, so these are pretty cool examples. I think these are pretty powerful examples too. But now we can tie all these functions together inside one register user function using a with statement. 
And a with statement is a, const uh, a control structure used for chaining together multiple expressions and pattern matches. The with statement is particularly useful for handling nested cases where each step de depends on the success of the previous one, often seen in scenarios involving multiple validations or function calls that could fail. So we can do that by creating a function called uh, register underscore user, and we're going to pass in user data. If I can type user underscore data, close parentheses, and then do n block. And now when they depend on the previous thing, we can just do a with. And so with, we want it to pattern match to an okay uh, tuple, and we don't care about the data in this case. And then we can call the function that we want to call. So we're going to say validate required fields and pass in user data. And then we can go ahead and just do comma and do the same thing again. So we can just put as many of these in a row as we want, always looking for the okay tuple and then the less than dash. And then we can call our validate email format and we can pass in user data dot email here and then comma and then looking for one more validation we can validate our age and pass in age which is user data dot age and then inside of our do block here we can then return okay um, regist registration, 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 successful. All right. And then let's say that um, something fails. We can just throw that in an else block here. Oop. An else block, and we can just return an air tuple with our with our reason and that will pass the air through that we're already getting back from our other functions that we're using so we'll just return an air and then the reason for that air and so if we save this and we go back to our terminal and we hit recompile and now let's um i just want to Do our required fields, all right? But now instead of calling this, I wanna use the same username. This email is valid, but we're going to call our register user. We're going to get an error back because we don't have age on this. So now we get key age not found. And so key error age not found. Um, let's go ahead and just add age now. And if we put in like a value 17 and hit enter, we'll get error age not valid. And then if we put 18, we say registration successful. So what we want to do, because we don't want an uncaught error, right? We actually want to add this, the age to our required fields. And so we can just do this now we require age and it's as easy as that. And if we go back to our terminal, recompile and now send it in without the age key, now we get missing fields age instead of an uncaught error because you never want an uncaught error and now our registration works. So that is how a with statement works. And this is how you can use built in um, kernel functions. I think we have a pretty decent understanding of how kernel functions can help us. We even learned a few more Elixir tricks with filtering regular expressions and using a with statement. So take some time, play around and practice using everything we learned and explore more kernel functions looking at the documentation at elixir-lang.org. And I will see you in the next video.